Time is short and nothing is our own. Those are the two biggest things. So before I passed away, I would spend a lot of time at work thinking that there were so many things that were more important than the time with my kids or the time with my wife. My whole attitude has changed. As soon as that clock strikes five, I'm doing what I can to get out of there. I do my very best not to talk about work or anything like that with, with my family. When I come home, it, it, it's family time. When I'm at the gym, I'm working out with my wife and then we pick up the kids together and make sure they're loved and take put it back in the car. We go home, we eat together, wrestle and put the kids to bed. And then on the weekends, we tear it up together. Yeah, it's just a different world than what it used to be. Being a dad is one of the most rewarding roles we will ever have in our lives, but also can be one of the most overwhelming. When we find ourselves facing the pressures of juggling the demands of our family, careers, and life. This show will feature industry experts in mental health, social services, and personal development, along with resilient dad role models, whose stories of overcoming the challenges of parenting get a new vision for the life you and your kids deserve. I'm your host, Pat Tedemeco, and this is The Resilient Dad Show. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Resilient Dad Show. I'm your host, Pat Tedemeco, and on today's episode, we have Justin Brown. Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So Justin's a 27-year-old husband and father of three beautiful children. Justin enjoys cars, both building and racing them. He loves boating, cooking, and sports. He's looking forward to teaching his sons how to play sports and exercise. Justin's eldest daughter and only daughter passed in her sleep at the age of 11 months. Her passing steered a transformation in Justin that led him on a journey of self-transformation. Justin lost 113 pounds over a two-year period. Now with the support of his wife, who is training actively with him and also helping him in the kitchen preparing for his second natural bodybuilding competition. So Justin... Thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing with us your story. When we first spoke, I was very inspired about not only your weight loss journey, but how you were able to overcome and essentially get through the your challenging time that you and your family went through. So thank you very much for your vulnerability and coming on the show. Yeah. When you go through something like that, you're forced into a position where you have to be vulnerable. You're, you have no control. Yeah. So... My, my story with my daughter, when she passed away, there was nothing I could do. I, uh, when she passed away in the middle of the night, I couldn't undo anything. I couldn't change anything. And when you're that helpless, you have to be vulnerable. And that, and vulnerability is what triggers transformation. So it triggered transformation in me. Yeah. And can you sh- share with us a bit more about your journey be- leading into becoming a dad uh, with us all? Yeah. So, I've always been a futurist, someone who's wanted a, I've wanted everything. I had everything mapped out. I told my parents exactly what I wanted to do starting at the age of five. <laughs> I said, I'm going to grow up. I'm going to graduate and I'm going to get married. I have kids. I have a house. I have a sports car. I'm going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I, I graduated high school, I, with, within 30 minutes of my parents drop, dropping me off, I had changed clothes and started looking for a wife. And a lot of girls said, no, didn't want to go out with me. But one of them stuck around and she is my beautiful wife, Sarah. And she has been my rock throughout my whole journey. But through through that, getting married while in school as a full-time student at the University of Tennessee Tech, as an engineering student, I, I was married. And then I took on a full-time job working at a manufacturing facility. And then joined our small group at church and we got baby fever. Everyone in our small group was having babies. And we said, we're not going to have babies, not for five years. We're not going to have kids. And then we held one in that little group and we said, we got to start ha- having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and nine months later, our beautiful daughter, Ariadne was born while we were in school. We had to get a new apartment. And, but through all that, I had stopped working out. I had stopped running a 5k every day, put on some weight. We gra- I graduated college to start a full-time job at Malibu boats and put on more weight, but was living in La Land. Like I'm just living the, my dream job. I've got my dream wife, I bought a sports car and my health wasn't as big of a priority at the time. And then in February of 2019, 
when my daughter was 11 months old, my, my wife went to check on her right before we went to bed around 10 o'clock and she wasn't moving and she wasn't there anymore. It was a very traumatic experience that night. As we drove to the hospital, though, I grabbed my wife's hand while she was in the passenger seat. And I said, honey, no matter what happens tonight, no matter what we find out, whatever we learn, whatever happens, I will never leave you. It was a very traumatic night, a very traumatic several weeks that followed, but we stuck together through it. And one of the things that I did to cope was, as anyone, everyone wants to cope with trauma and with loss, grief, everyone grieves in a certain way. I, I ate a lot. I went to the Cheesecake Factory and got an extra large New York cherry cheesecake and ate the whole thing in one week. There was a lot of other instances of me overindulging and I got up to close to 315 pounds three months after my daughter had passed away. I went back to work and I started just having all kinds of struggles physically, struggling going up the stairs to my office, just struggling at home, heavy breathing, rashes. It just, and I was miserable, but I knew that I was this was how I wasn't supposed to live this way, that there were, there was something more, some, something bigger. There's some redemption story here. And I started a journey to find that joined a gym, started making different changes, was in counseling for 18 months. And it was just baby steps, baby steps. Two years later, I'm down to 210 pounds and a week out from my first natural bodybuilding competition. And Taking those baby steps, I'm sure that you would have learned and built a lot of patience and being able to take that hero's journey that you did as we all have in our life the opportunity to go from where we've been, which is not maybe not necessarily where we want to be, but there's it's that ability to then move forward and taking that at least initial first step to then moving towards where you want. So it was like two year, two year period of, of exercising to lose weight and that did that was that part of a big part that helped you deal with what you were going through? So the, the there's a lot of th- different things that helped. Prayer, being with my wife, my family, Sarah's family, counseling, those things really helped me up up here and in here. But Anytime someone goes through a traumatic experience, the body keeps score. I don't know if you've heard that before, but the body keeps score. And we're reminded of that every year. Is the same time when Ari passed away every year, I feel broken, hurt. Like I, fi- I feel physical pain. That night when she passed away, my, my head was on fire. My bones were aching. My muscles were locking up. In the months that followed after she passed away, I was physically hurting. There, were, there was a lot of, it was, it was just this pain that you can't really describe. So when it came to getting in shape and working out and making healthier choices, it was a matter of choosing not to live in pain and seeking to be something new, something, some a different person than the person I was. And something I also had to cope with was that it wasn't Aries passing that, that, made me incredibly overweight. I was on my way before that. I was just making little, little steps. And then all of a sudden it just got exacerbated by this one night. And who are you saying like the body keeping score, like it it holds everything within. For me, even on my own sort of journey of my health transformation, realizing that I needed to let that out and being able to do that in a positive way with exercise in comparison to eating because eating was always one of my vices that always that I dealt with trauma or things that were going on. And yeah, it definitely helped to release that in a positive way. So can you tell me a bit more about with then having your your next child? So now you've got two other, two other children, two, two young boys. How was that? for you in terms of that experience of losing your first child and then now having the opportunity again to be a father to other young children? 
so it it is so uh, just it's so weird so it, we had gotten into this rhythm sarah and i and Aaron. it was the three of us right before she passed away we're thinking you know what just having this one beautiful girl and just us both working and this, this is this this is all we need and we were thinking maybe she could she'll just be our only daughter and then this will be we're just happy that this is what this is the end. Like we, we've accomplished everything we need to accomplish. And after all that was taken away, then it's okay. There's something else for us. And I remember going on a walk with Sarah outside our apartment because we just wanted to get out of the house a lot during that time. And we're like, I think we have a heart for children. We're not, we can't go on like this. It's not that we wanted to have kids to replace Ari. But it, Aries passing was not an excuse for us not to pursue joy and the joy of raising children and hearing someone say, I love you, mommy and daddy. It's using uh, it. The, yeah. Yeah. No, the, the, you guys experienced so much love with your daughter. And then I'm sure that she would be you know, happy and, and grateful that you guys are now continuing that with your two other young kids because it'd be a shame to withhold all that for the rest of your lives because of what you guys went through. It takes a lot of courage and I commend you guys for that because we, with a lot of, unfortunately, challenges with parenting and separation and so forth, there's fathers that I speak to that pretty much look at it as if their current situation is going to be there forever without realizing that there's an opportunity here to one, work on themselves and better themselves so that they can be the best version of themselves like you did with your own self-transformation and then being able to be the role models for their kids, even if they're not present every single day, but they're still able to be that role model for their kids and they still have the ability to love their kids regardless of their circumstances. So. It's a great example of what you've gone through to overcome that and not allow your situation to withhold you from life moving forward. <laughs> what would be the greatest lessons that you've learned from everything that you've gone through from losing your first daughter to then being able to be our father again to, to two beautiful boys? Time is short and nothing is our own. Those are the two biggest stops. Before I passed away, I would spend a lot of time at work thinking that there were so many things that were more important than the time with my kids or the time with my wife. And my whole attitude has changed. As soon as that clock strikes five, I'm doing what I can to get out of there. I do my very best not to talk about work or anything like that with my family. When I come home, it's family time. When I'm at the gym, I'm with, I'm working out with my wife. And then we pick up the kids together and make sure they're loved and take, put it back in the car. We go home, we eat together, wrestle and put the kids to bed. And then on, on the weekends, we tear it up together. Yeah. So we, yeah, it's just a different world than what it used to be. Yeah. Gratitude for every moment that you have, because, you know, we never know what's going to happen. So can you tell us a bit more about your fitness journey and the the journey of being able to be patient to to lose 113 pounds over two years? So patience, is, yeah. That, so I, I said time is short and nothing's your own. But yeah, patience is, is very hard to come by. And that's why so many diets, so many things fail. So if you've done, looked at any studies, all these people that do crash diets, every single person that goes on a diet, it works to some degree. But then they rebound. In a lot of cases, people end up overweight at the end of um because they went the opposite direction. So for me, I had to take baby steps. And I didn't. So right now I'm a member of Gold's Gym. And I work out with a lot of really big buff guys and a lot of people that are just very aggressive in the gym, very productive. But I, that it's not how it started because I didn't want to just go to a gym like that and get burnt out by looking at other people and just it's just different cult. I had 313 pounds. I started just by walking at lunch at work. Then I started walking up and down the hill back and forth, not just on level ground, but going up and down an incline. Then I started jogging at lunch. Then I changed my diet. I stopped drinking every night. I started drinking only one time 
on the weekends. Then I changed my diet to where I wasn't having cereal and fast carbs in the evening and I was having oatmeal in the morning. And then I changed to where in addition to running, I would wake up at five in the morning before work and I would jump rope in my garage, do some just some basic weights and just doing 30 minutes of activity in the morning, walking or jogging at lunch and then just not drinking every day. Uh, I went from 315 to 280, 260 within two, two and a half, three months, r- pretty quick. Wow. Just doing those basic things. But then the journey from 260 to 230, that took a much longer time because it just required, it, it, was, it was no longer you're just making basic things. You, you had to start getting more aggressive. And that's when I joined workout anytime, started working out at four in the morning, started being more aggressive in the type of food I ate. But I still found myself struggling with overeating. Even if it was good food, I would still eat just a lot of it. If I was supposed to eat oatmeal for breakfast, instead of having one cup of oatmeal, I'd have four. Because I still wanted that volume. I wanted to feel full all the time. So then to compensate, I would run five miles at lunch. And then I would work out for three hours to try to cover up all the overeating. Yeah. But eventually I got to 2.30, but there was a lot of ups and downs in there. We had a scare with my eldest son. He had a seizure at 11 months old. Fever got up to 104 degrees. Like eyes went in the back of his head, started foaming at the mouth. And while he was in the car, we had to pull over, call an ambulance and rush him to the ER. It was terrifying. And he was completely fine. It was a febrile seizure. But it was literally just two weeks away from the same time period in which Ari had died. So we just freaked out. And I started overeating again. And then my weight went back up. And then my weight went back. And then I worked through that, went back to counseling. And my weight started to go back down again. The journey from 230 to 205 for bodybuilding competition, that was a totally different ballgame. And can you tell us a bit about, so you've gone from a massive weight, gradually losing 40, 50 pounds pretty quickly and then to the next, the remainder. But then what were the, so what did it take to get to the next level to get to 205? So just in terms of timing. So yeah, there's a lot of ups and downs. I had a lot of stuff, but say there's no hiccups. Like the time it takes to get from 40% of body fat to 20% to to 25% body fat, you can do that in 12 to 16 weeks. It's in the time it takes to get from 20, 25% to 15%. That's also 16 weeks. Yeah. Time it takes to get from 10% or 10, 15% to 5% body fat is also 16 to 24 weeks. So just as much work, just as much effort, but obviously uh, as a metrics, it it doesn't look like you're achieving as much, but that's what it took for you to get to the next level. Yeah. So for example, training for my, my, my second natural bodybuilding competition and my diet right now, because I'm 11, I'm almost 10 weeks out. I'm eating a pound of raw tuna at lunch and I'll eat eight ounces of salmon for dinner. I will have a protein bar, low carb protein bar for breakfast. I'll have two cups of egg whites, two whole eggs, two scoops of pea protein isolate and two scoops of equate pea protein supplement mix and two gallons of water a day. And that's basically my standard diet. There are some sauces I put in there, some wasabi and extra salt and stuff, but that comes out to be like 320 grams of protein and only 25, 30 carbs and about 40, 50 grams of fat. And that's, that's a very aggressive diet, but that's what it takes to maintain muscle and lose that at less 10, 15 pounds before competition. And creating that discipline in your daily habits, because it's tremendous discipline and patience to go from where you were to, to where you are right now. How has that impacted yourself in being a dad, like being a role model for your kids? There's a lot of little things that you get rewarded. And in, in, in my case, you, you only hope for things like this. 
But when you start making a transformation, other people notice. So like just today at work, people are asking me, Justin, what's your secret? And two people asked for, they said, hey, I'm going grocery shopping this weekend. I need you to tell me what to go buy at the grocery store. Like that, I love words of affirmation. That's one of my love languages. So when people ask me questions like that's affirmation, but the most rewarding thing is when I come home and we're eating dinner and my son is saying, daddy, I'm going to eat all my dinner because I want to be big and strong like you. Amazing. Little compliment, little things like that. That's what spurs on discipline can reward you. But when it's noticed by others, other people then reward you. Absolutely. The greatest is the affirmation from external. You're able, people are able to see without you even saying anything. And you're displaying that amazingly, not only to, to others, but most importantly to your family. Mm-hmm. So well done on that. And if you could give a, a dad that's going out there who's currently going through some struggles, if you could give them like one piece of advice, what would be the most important thing for them to focus on during their time of adversity? What would that be? So I think it all comes down to patience. One of the I don't know if you've heard the story, but it's a generic story that people talk about where some guy goes up on a mountain and asks for all these wise monks. What is one saying that can apply to every time in my life? Every Everything, this saying would apply to everything. And they go and think about it and think about it for many days and they come back and they say, even this too shall pass. That's the saying. And that resonated with me a lot. Even this too shall pass. Whatever the adversity is, it will pass. But then once it does pass, it's up to you what to do with that time. Yeah. You can linger. Yeah. Yeah. Do we choose to continue to suffer or do we use that to use that energy for, for good, which you're a great example of? The people were very patient with me when I went back. I was off work for three weeks when Ari died. And then when I came back, everyone just was very patient with me because they didn't have all these expectations for me to somehow be just the way I was before, which is amazing that my company would do that. And I had to learn to be, if people were going to be patient with me, I had to be patient with myself. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to talking to other dads, just being patient and knowing when to be in the moment and when to dream, when to dream about the future and to have to rekindle hope and joy when when I was in the pit of despair and I had the choice or I'm going to choose to continue to linger in this grief to any linger or choose joy to have the vision of saying, hey, a year from now, I'm going to be training for my first natural bodybuilding competition and I'm going to do it with my wife and son in the stands. Like that's a dream. You got to hold on to those dreams and hopes desires, whatever they are, and not just accept your fate in the pit of despair, the sands of time. Absolutely. Justin, thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing your story of being able to overcome adversity through a very challenging time of your life to now be the role model, not only for others, most importantly, like your kids. Thank you very much for coming on and sharing. And if someone wanted to reach out to you, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you? I have an email. I, I respond to text messages too, but I'll just hand out my email. My email is sartstudio at gmail.com. I respond within minutes. I'm always checking my emails probably more than I should, but it's JB's Art Studio. I do artwork. That's another thing that I do as well. I've got to ship an art piece out to um, a guy in Utah. So uh, nice. yeah, JB's Art Studio at gmail.com. So guys, feel free to reach out to Justin, a man that's been a great role model and hopefully will inspire you to overcome adversity that you're going through in your life. So Justin, thank you again for coming on the show and for everyone, please like and share and look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Always remember, you're stronger than you think you are. Stay resilient. Hey everyone, really appreciate you listening to today's show. It means a lot to me that you are part of the journey and mission to help fathers be the best dads possible. I'd really appreciate it if you review the show and share it with someone you genuinely believe could benefit from this content. Please visit resilientdad.com for more content and resources as we build this community for dads everywhere.